Hey, what's poppin'? It is your girl, Coconina. We're here at phase one, aka my second home. Yeah, that's, that's what's up. So I was originally born on Western Road. You don't know what it is. Shouts out to, you know, the man from the freaking Western Road, Southside, all that stuff. And then um, we moved over to Etobicoke for a couple of years because uh, my auntie's aunt, my not my blood aunt, but like my auntie, her auntie died. So then we were like, okay, let's move into her house because my grandpa didn't want us no more, it didn't seem like, and we were living in his house. So we went to my auntie's house and then we lived there for a couple years. And then my mom got pregnant with my little brother when I was 13. So we moved with my stepdad who's from Jana Finch. He's from Connection Seaside. So we moved to Jana Finch, up and down Driftwood a little bit. When I used to spend more times in Connections, it was more when I was like a little girl and my stepdad would babysit me and he'd like bring me to the P in the bar and like, you know, freaking all the crazy people would be there you know what i'm saying don't want to show no names but like skin dog and all these guys doing mod things on the block and i was just a little shy girl i didn't understand nothing my mom was white i was super confused i love western road like western road is my ends but then i guess because i was more so a teenager at gina finch it like connected to me more because that's when i got more freedom right because when i was like a little kid i'm walking around with my mom i'm seeing my mom's perspective my mom's point of view but when we moved to gina finch i was like 13 I was like just about to, like I was going to high school starting high school just about to and like I started seeing everything differently like that's when I really realized like you know what the streets were it's here on a goodie I cook at Nina's video shoot I'm so excited thanks for having me there is always that kind of energy nearby but my mom did a really good job of like sheltering me from it and then one day it's like it's just all like because then we moved even further away from it because then we were in Etobicoke for like a two years right mm. but then we came back and we went right to Jenna Finch and I was like oh geez now I'm like you know just different oh, RIP my friend Dylan um he he was a big help to me um I went through a lot of shit I've been through a lot of shit um and yo there was the only person who ever really like like fucked with me like on a level where it was like yo you need someone taking out taking them out and then I moved to BC, came back, seen him once. He was crying to me. And then, like, a week later, I'm trying to reach him. And he was dead. Wow. That's the way it goes. That was my best friend. Like, I, I know a lot of people, like, his girlfriends didn't like me and shit. But me and him never had nothing sexual. Like, we tried once at the very beginning when we met. We, like, we tried. We're like, hmm, yeah, you're cute. But then I was like, nah, this doesn't feel right. And then, like, he kind of became, like, a brother figure. Like, when I needed, when I was moving from the basement to Potsdam, he was, like, he came and he, I didn't even have to ask him. He was like, oh, you're moving? I'm coming to help you. And he just helped move all my stuff. He like used to call my mom, mom. It was like life. And then like, you know, there's always those those people. Like a lot of the people, to be honest, that I used to mess with on, like on a Finch, I don't really mess with anymore because I was actually, I was in a really messed up abusive relationship from when I was like 16 until like this past year. And, um, and it, it, like it messed with me a lot because like I, actually met a lot of people through him right he was older than me i was 16 he was 25 um and he used to bring me around show me around like he, I, he would give me work i'd move it like you know what i mean like i was like working for him pretty mm -hmm. much like moving shit like i never did none of that whole shit but at the end of the day like i was getting my dollars for him i was helping him like at the end of the day i was serving the man them the man them were getting served through him because of me like I was yeah. dealing with them because like he'd go OT and I was the boss like you know the other day I met a girl that came to the session and she's like yo he used to serve my man still you see he used to re-up off you I'm like yeah yo like duh you think I'm lying in my tracks so like a lot of those people don't even mess with me no more because me and him ended up having a domestic but fuck like this man was 10 years older than me abusing me since I was 16 years old kicking me in my face and nobody stood up for me so fuck you expect a bitch to do I was avoiding a warrant because of the same guy right last year mm. for when I actually met at auntie and started working with abstract learning it was a lot of difficulties because I'm like yo I can't even go home right now like I'm avoiding the police I'm like staying with my auntie downtown my mom's like calling me yo they're knocking on your uncle's door don't go over there <laughs> like you know oh, what wow. I'm saying I didn't want to go to court for that shit so my bench warrant turned into a warrant and because that the oh. previous relations and they've raided my house and gotten they like found stuff but not what they wanted to find so the police just been mad at me you know what i mean because so they can't they catch me they raided my house looking for, li house looking for things that they couldn't find because yeah. a bitch not stupid i had to pay my lawyer to come i had to pay for my lawyer to come through and talk to the crown and rate it, take, get rid of it 
he was like, yo, she's here. She's like, you guys are mad at her for not participating. And now she's here. But now she's here. Yeah. She's been avoiding it for a long time. We know, but she's sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> and plus it probably helped that uh, dude was abusive. Too. Yeah, like, you know, and at the end of the day, I'm like, fuck, this nigga's still in my DMs trying to threaten me. Wow. He's still calling me, trying to threaten me to this day. Wow. To this day. And he's not in jail because of me because and like you know what i'm saying the fucking neighbors called the police my nigga and i fucking went to court and fucking told them i do not want this guy to go to jail if anything you guys want to do me some favors please get him mental health help because yeah, yeah. he's obviously not okay like why is he doing this to girls i never really tried to portray anything like that like i obviously just became affiliated because i was like messing with certain people and i was in certain ends and i had connections to certain things right so at the end of the day, like, I grew up watching niggas bang, who so, like, my man number from Connections, my ex was from Connections, like, you know what I mean? The people I ended up chilling with, like, the people I was around, but, like, I'm not really with the fuckery, like, I just want to get money, like, I was always a nerd in school, you know what I mean? And because, like, if I didn't get kicked out of school, I'd probably be, like, an architect right now. Don't play, well, not now, I'd probably be in university because I'm only 20, but you know what I mean? I got kicked out of school when I was 16, so like wow. the path just kind of, it all came. I couldn't go to no schools in Ontario. Wow. I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm gonna sell dope. What the fuck else am I gonna do? I put the fucking vice principal in a neck brace for like two years. I broke oh, that yeah. bitch's neck. She fucked with me though. So then after, like we we're gonna sue them but we're broke right we're poor we, and we're not like poor poor but we don't have no money you know what i mean yeah. so like, we couldn't sue them we hired a lawyer to get rid of my assault charges mm -hmm. and then i ended up like unfortunate like even the way i had to deal with that was stupid but like at the end of the day fuck i'm not letting the system fuck with me they yeah. can't fucking get my fucking education and take away my right to travel and my right to fucking have a good job and not have to sign on my, like fuck that yeah. i think just moving around and seeing all the things i've seen like everything like i've seen some horrible shit i've seen freaking yo like you know what i mean i used to be in the freaking elevator of palisades and there'd be a pool of blood on the floor and ain't nobody know how the blood got there but you're just gonna step around it casually and keep it moving i like i've been to nice rich neighborhoods because my mom's like a pilates instructor and she used to have these clients that are super or she still does these like wealthy nice jewish people and then you see that and then you're in the basement in the cold and there's a little roach crawling across the fucking fucking thing and you're just sitting there all depressed and shit and you're like whoa how did we how did we get here i don't want to come back here and just knowing knowing what that you know what you know and you've seen both sides that's that's how you win what's going on guys it's your boy that newman fly we're on set of coca nina's uh music video real i'm playing the heartthrob i don't know how i landed this <laughs> but i don't know how to roll it so i'm out of here yeah yo one of my favorite things and i was actually reminded of this the other day is i used to go to urban arts and Urban Arts, they had a location at Jaina Weston. You already know, shall sell Weston Road one more time. And um, we used to just turn up. Like, that was the first place I ever heard myself being recorded on, like, an actual mic in, like, a studio. It wasn't the greatest, but it was a studio. And it was my first time, like, really feeling like I was talented. Like, I would go there and that we'd be playing around they'd be like yeah let's do a rap battle and i was like er, i've never done this before let's go but i marked every single nigga in that bitch i'm sorry to say jay soul i'm sorry cool. to all you other guys <laughs> but you already know i marked all of you with fucking swiss all you guys yo me and jay soul had a kickoff he might tell you that i didn't win it, we might have decided it was a tie but in reality come on i was a 14 year old girl and i was out here freaking marking everybody so don't tell you it's he's like two years older than me maybe three i don't know okay he's old enough he's like... older than me they're all older than me yeah. like swiss the other one shiggy what's his name swiss oh uh, yeah swiss is a rapper yes swiss, yeah, swiss supreme oh, like that, guy. that guy i love him i love him you guys are all like my older brothers by the way don't take it as a diss but let's be real like i'm the fucking illest <laughs> When I'm rapping, like, honestly, it's a different side of me, right? Like, it's like, it depends. I still write a lot of rap music. I still, I still rap a lot, but I've also become a lot more confident in my singing. Like, I've always loved to sing, but I've never been told, like, whoa, like, that right there is the shit. That you are fucking ton up until recently. I don't know if it's because I have boobs now. I don't know if it's because I'm fucking mean to people and they listen when you're ruder. Can't just be a pushover all the time. I'm sure as a lot of people know when I when I first started so it was after when I came back from BC and I came back and Chromas started doing her music thing and I was really surprised at first because actually like her first studio session 
was my studio session but my ex was actually like fucking me up like literally he was fucking me up and i called her crying and she was like oh you're late sorry and she just went to my studio session and i was like oh what a great friend all right do your thing and then after that i went to bc came back and she's like doing her music thing now and like you know i'm a good person so at the end of the day i'm like yo of course i'm gonna support shorty like shorty wants to do music like who would i be to stand in the way a dream is a dream a goal is a goal if that's really what you want to do fucking do it if anything is a compliment because she used to watch me fucking freestyle in my bathroom you know what i'm saying she used to sit there and record me and fucking like bobble her head while i was freestyling and shit so <laughs> so like at the end of the day i was like okay that's lit good for you she brought me to the studio because obviously she was out here doing her um selling pussy not packs and she wanted to um fucking bring me to the studio i was like oh that's so kind of you like i wasn't up or nothing because i'm fucking paying for lawyer fees and shit Mm -hmm. and like either way i was like in bc being a waitress so we started doing music together we actually did a couple songs together i thought everything was going well i i i guess my i i would have like i don't know man i thought everything was good and then and then my friend cut me off one day of a page that i made i made a page i made a ybm official page okay I'm like, you girls are wanna be YBM. They made up this whole thing. My girl got it tatted on her face. I'm like, sure, I think youth beauty money sounds really stupid. It's not actually grammatically correct. But hey, if that's what you have tatted on your face, I guess I'll rep it for you. Like, you know what I mean? (laughs) So then, fuck, I'm like, I'm gonna be a good friend and stick it out for the girl. So then we were there and I tried to be a good friend. And then literally the day I dropped on Dada, and it was right after she got arrested for a whole bunch of bullshit and got out, who knows how don't know how my girl got out so quick but anyways so then i was like the day after i dropped no the same day i dropped my video this girl cut me off of the page logged me out and messaged me and told me i'm not ybm anymore like not that i was begging to be ybm but fuck i was like what like Like, you know what i mean i I was really confused i was like girl like you're my fucking best friend like i have fucking christmas presents for you under my tree right now like literally i had christmas presents for them under my tree so i was really confused like you know what i mean they're trying to tell me i'm fucking ratting on them i'm like my girl i was getting dick all right i don't know who the fuck you think was ratting on you i was literally in a fucking box shop position and you're trying to tell me that i was fucking on the phone in famine not your funny bro i was just avoiding a warrant for how long to not go to court for a domestic i'm avoiding a motherfucking warrant i was avoiding a mother yo bro yo thank you for the smart people in the room that are not idiots bro at the end of the day i think people are just threatened i dropped my first music video on the same day I dropped my first music video, and it was my mom who pointed that out, too. My mom told me from the jump, bro, these are the same shorties that came to my grandmother's funeral dressed in ho-ass clothing, trying to trick people, trying to trick niggas at my grandmother's funeral. I should have known they weren't my friends. I should have motherfucking known. And that's why, yo, we don't get sad no more. We get fucking angry because people want to play us, and we don't play. We do not play. She's at my grandmother's fucking funeral. My grandmother, my fucking grandmother, my best friend. Yo, I got her tatted on my fucking shit. You don't know. That's my grandmother, you know what I'm saying? And my girl came to my grandmother's motherfucking funeral on some whole shit, dressed with her fucking titties hanging out, talking, oh my God, uh, yeah, you want to know what this means? It means vagina. What the fuck are you doing, you dumb hoe? I will, yo, she's so lucky I was heartbroken at the time. Yo, it's a good thing I get depressed, because if I didn't get depressed, a lot of people would be dead. (laughs) Like, I swear. I think we could have made a good team. Like, her titties plus my lyrics. We could have beat Nicki Minaj. We could have beat Cardi B. We could have beat all these people. But, you know, people are petty, and they don't want to see each other win. Apparently, you can only come up by yourself. Bro, same way, like, I didn't fucking, I didn't believe in her vision, to be honest, never did. Like, uh, she'll tell you I got drunk one day and told her, like, I should be where you are. I don't know how you got caught. I got drunk one day, I was on a tipsy wave, and I told her straight, because honestly, what the fuck? How the fuck did you get fucking this? And you fucking sound like that. Don't lie to me, this is weird. So then, you know what I mean? So obviously, if I have other ladies, I don't even care. Like, even if I don't fuck with your music, at the end of the day, if you're doing what you have to do, you're grinding, I don't give a fuck if you're a stripper, you want to do whatever the fuck you want. You want to sell pussy, that's your business. Just know as long as you're not going to go around telling people I sold mine, because you know what I mean? At the end of the day, if you're a real nigga, you're a real nigga. Like, I'm not going to be opposed to that. Why do you think I had Rax and Nana there? Like, and we weren't even good in, like, in the, when I first started music, me and Nana had, like, a little, we had a little riffraff. Yeah. And he shouts out to Riff Raff, he's an artist. <laughs> and like, you know, so we had a little Riff Raff, but at the end of the day, like, I talked to her on a real nigga tip. I'm like, yo, you were batting up my friend. I thought that was my friend. I'm obviously gonna fend for her. 
And then it's oh, like so that was when because yeah originally yeah because like they were beefing yeah, and yeah. i'm a real nigga so i'm like yo if you're beefing with my girl just know i'll gurks you don't play with me i'm not the one and she even knows this girl's telling her body her fucking management oh yeah coconina's my bodyguard she'll crush people for me because you don't know i'm loyal as fuck i'm so loyal i couldn't even freaking like tell you it's an it's an it gets me hurt it gets me hurt a lot <laughs> but that's okay that's okay that's okay life is what it is you know but then I just, like, I have to support other artists. Like, as long as you're good to me and you don't show me wrong, I have no reason to not fuck with you. So how did uh, the Rihanna situation happen? Uh, it was actually really cool. So I was like, I thought it was all a koal, to be honest. I was like, nah, Rihanna doesn't know who I am. These people don't know who the fuck I am. They're lying to me. This is a koal. I've been koaled before by, like, six months and shit. Okay. So when management told me, they're like, yeah, this like producer, Rihanna's producer, is reaching out. He wants you to try and write a few things. It's a Caribbean style album. Da da da. I'm like, oh my god, I've heard all the rumors that maybe she's dropping a Caribbean album. It's true. It's true. <laughs> like, I started having like a serious panic attack. I called my mom. I'm like, mom, mom, mom. I think Rihanna wants me to write a song. I got so giddy. I like might have cried a little bit. Don't tell nobody. And then <laughs> it was hilarious. So then she sent me a beat. I wrote a song. They're like, this is amazing, but it's too lyrical or something like that. I can't remember exactly what they said. It was too complicated. They wanted something like, I don't want to say, they didn't say dumbed down. What did they say? Uh, catchy. They wanted something catchy, which in my words, I think means dumbed down. They wanted something that said less to project more. Cause you know how on the radio, everybody likes the repetitive shit. Yeah, yeah. So I dropped, so I wrote that song. They sent it back. They're like, oh, it's not repetitive enough or whatever. So then I did another one, which is the one I'm actually going to go do a video for. Okay. And I sent that to them, and they're like, yo, this is dope. I think Rihanna's really gonna like this. And then they messaged me, like, a couple weeks later. They're like, like, and then they sent me another beat. And I was like, yo, you guys are taking advantage of me. But, you know, I, it's Rihanna, so fuck. I let her take advantage of me. <laughs> and I wrote another song. And this one, they're like, make it a conscious song. I'm like, something like Diamonds. I'm like, conscience, what do you mean? I just dropped Malala. So now I'm thinking maybe that's why they hauled it at me, right? So I wrote another conscience song, which is also bomb, and I might just have to drop that one too, because apparently then they emailed me again, sent me like a a techno or like a techno, I don't know. So it was just like not my genre, very electronic. And I was like, honestly, I don't like this. So I just didn't write to it. If it's not natural, I'm not gonna like go out of my way to drain my brain and make myself think I'm having writer's block. I don't get writer's block. I just hear beats sometimes and I can't write to them because I don't connect to them. Yeah. So yeah, but then after that, unfortunately, they messaged me. They're like, oh, we're gonna go another direction. I was a little sad, but then he was like, hey, you can have this beat for a, a good a good price still. And I was like, hey, well, you, what's your normal price? He told us the normal price. We're like, yeah, we cannot <laughs> afford that. Like we are still on Weston Road. We did not move to the nice Drake neighborhood yet. Yeah. We are not with the Jewish people yet. It's one day one day but then so yeah he gave it to us for an awesome price and i was like that is ton up we are gonna take the song we're gonna fly with the song and we are gonna make rihanna cheese that she didn't yeah, she <laughs> like, it's just like all these bitches want to talk about little shit that's wrong with me and then i'm like but rihanna's producer thinks i'm fucking sick okay so at the end of the day why am i tripping like why am i tripping about what little bitches think like you know what i mean not to say that you guys are little bitches sorry but like you know what i mean like you guys don't matter i mean like who do you really like, matter to right? like, like you know what i mean yeah. like you want to criticize me but at the end of the day what that what are you doing like you're no better than who, me like i can't judge you same way you can't judge me what the fuck like why am i mad that all these little voices want to talk shit and be so like like full of hate and just projects all of their own like uh, clearly they're going through some shit and they want to take it out on me because i'm just fucking here and i'm pretty and i'm fucking amazing and like the fuck am i gonna do like fucking i could cry about it i, I have cried about it but i'm not gonna fucking dwell forever but what are you gonna say like oh all these little people that don't mean anything think i'm so shit but this one person who thinks who's like means a lot more than like their opinion musically sorry like everybody's opinion matters but you know what i mean someone who like actually has a say like, like she's fucking <laughs> rihanna bitch and her people are reaching out to me are they reaching out to you no so obviously i feel super sick i had to get on my high horse for a second i'm trying to come down I'm trying <laughs> no, that's good, that's good. i don't want to be that cocky that. i don't want people to hate me <laughs> Just, you know, look out for my EP. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a sick-ass EP February 14th. It's going to have five different flavors. It's called The Five. And it's, you know, by Coconina Five. So look out.
And um, nobody, nobody, nobody broke, broke their neck. neck. So <laughs> there we go. Okay, so Thank you, everybody. Oh, look, I'm